Officer, I have things to confess to you. What's that? I killed my parents. I can't tell them, Please, God, please. I'm better to be with you. I'm scared. I'm very afraid. Okay. I'm very afraid. Use me as a political pawn for him to get a step up at the UN. He wife. works for the UN? Pardon? He works for the UN? He works. He works. He's okay. dead now. I killed him. When a man is pulled over in Avon, Ohio, in the dead of night for a driving infraction, police are shocked by the unsolicited confession he has for them. In the midst of frantic, grandiose rambling, he chillingly reveals that he has committed murder. Even more shocking was his identification of the victims, his own parents. The question is, are they actually dead, or is he so far removed from reality that police can't trust a word he says? I've been noticing really strange things about their behavior, and also, it's very, it goes very deep with those two. It goes very deep, and I finally recovered from the mental drugs that they had me on for, for decades. They had me on neuroleptic drugs. They locked me up over and over again for trying to uh, be normal. On February 2nd, 2019, police receive an unusual 911 call. A shopper reports that he saw a man who was acting strangely get in his car in a Cabela's parking lot and drive off. The problem was, it was a cloudy night at 9.30 p.m., and the man was driving with no lights on, no license plate, and a missing tire, sending sparks behind him into the darkness as he drove on the rim. An officer reported to the scene to pull the driver over. It seemed like it would be a simple case. Perhaps it was a drunk driver or someone who'd abused substances behind the wheel. As he approaches 53-year-old Robert James Rath, he has no idea how delusional the man before him really is. Shut off the car. Okay. Station. Shut off the car. You hear me? Shut, shut off the car. Throw the keys on top of the hood. Put the keys on the hood. Right away, the officer determines something is off, and it only gets stranger from here. All right. With your left hand, open the open the driver's side door, okay? From the outside, there you go. Yep, step out of the vehicle for me. Okay. All right. Yep, step out of the vehicle. Okay, just face away from me, okay? Okay, I'm obedient. Okay, just face away from me, stand out of the car, okay? Okay, I have something protective on, very frightening. Okay, just keep your hands in the air. Keep them where I can see them. Okay, face away from me. 57, get here now. At the sight of the thick body armor Robert's wearing, the officer calls for backup. In something as mundane as a traffic stop, this backup call immediately sends up bright red flags for the responding officers. Face away from me. Face away from me, my man. Put your hands on top of your head, okay? Got a male wearing body armor. He's got a weapon on him. Okay, stay right there, okay? Don't move. Keep your hands on top of your head, okay? Don't look at me. What do you have on you? I have a what? I have a compass. I have a work Okay. I have an app. Okay. 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 I have anything going on there? 54 of them now. No, I'm figuring out what he has. I'm talking to him. Okay, just keep your hand. You make contact with him right now? Yeah, he's standing out of his vehicle. I'm just talking to him. His hands are on the side. I'm not, I don't feel like moving okay. anything on me. Okay. It's important to note that though Robert is being handcuffed, he's not under arrest. Officers may cuff individuals if they're determined to be a potential risk to law enforcement or to the public. In this case, Robert's strange behavior and admission that he has weapons in his car give the officer enough cause to handcuff him. Don't move, don't move your hands at all, okay? <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, do I have things to confess to you? What's that? I, I killed my parents. So what is he telling us? He, they said he does. Nobody knows about it. He, he, fled, he fled from there. Does anybody know? No, he said a couple days ago. Okay. The officers are clearly dumbfounded by Robert's claim that he's murdered his own parents. They dig for information as best they can. Stay right there for me, okay? The fact that Robert states his parents live in Virginia only makes his claim that he killed them more strange. Avon, Ohio, where he was pulled over, is a 10-hour drive away from Midlothian, where his parents reside. And that also means it's well out of the attending officer's jurisdiction. Wanting answers, one of the officers retreats to his car to see if he can get any information on Robert and whether or not he's telling the truth, as the suspect from an unsolved double murder in Virginia really just stumbled into their grasp. Hey, it's Leroy. This guy's claiming that he killed his parents a couple days ago and he fled from Virginia, but nobody knows about it. Oh, lovely. Can you uh, find out where he's from and call the local authorities over there and find out if there's anything to that that, that comes up with, with that at all, please? Ten four. Right. I've got New Avon Lake units standing by at the tracks. All right. Yeah, he's from Midlothian, Virginia. I'm going to run a CCH as well as soon as I get a chance. A CCH is a computerized criminal history, an online database containing known criminal offenders' information across all qualified justice agencies. If Robert has a shady past, there's no way to hide it. His officers wait to hear whether Robert's parents have been reported missing or worse. They continue questioning Robert. However, it doesn't take many questions to get him talking. Do you have any guns on you in the car? I have a gun, but I have work tool. And I have an axe in my, in my jacket. I'm very frightened out here. Okay, what are you wearing this vest for? Because I'm afraid of being shot. I've seen a lot of people, very frightening people. Okay. Like Latin gangs and all these other people. It's frightening the out of me. That's, I snapped at home. I, I felt threatened by my father and mother. When did this happen? I got he said he killed his parents in Virginia. Very frightened of being locked up by the gun. There's also a taser. There's a taser in my pocket. It's not meant for the police. Okay. In front of you guys, believe me. Well, we appreciate it. Explosives on you or in the car? No, no explosives. But, you know, I don't know what's in the car and I heard implications, you know, with. with my biological father, there's anything, was his car first. Implying that his father may be behind anything unusual in the car, like explosives, is just a fraction of the delusional thinking Robert's struggling with. Soon he will paint for detectives a full picture of his conspiracy theories and bring his statement about killing his parents into question even more. So are you a survivalist or? No, I'm not. I'm a musician, actually. <laughs> Keep this taser in mind. Much like the axe, there is an unbelievable story behind it, one that will soon be revealed. How many more weapons do you have on you? I, ha I can't, I can't. hard to count them right now. Where was that axe at? The axe is inside on the left side, inside the green field jacket. Robert, how'd you end up here? Uh, uh, running away from trouble. Okay. Do you know where you are? Together and see my my nephew. Okay. Do you know what state you're in? This is Ohio, right? Yes. Do you know where at in Ohio you're about? No, I either Lake Erie or near Kent State. Okay. Well, you're I'm correct. I'm actually lost, and I don't know how to get out of this bungle. I wanted to get far far enough away, and you know, I'm not, there's no way you can evade the okay. police. I work with computers. I know that there's no way to evade. Uh, factual truth. He's still got axes and knife on him. All right, let's get going. All right, Robert, we're going to lift you up. All right. All right. We're not going to hurt you. All right. Ready? All right. Go to your knees. Roll them on the side. Bring your knees up. Roll them on your side, buddy. Bring your knees up to your chest there, all right? All right. All right. All right. There we go. Now roll up. Now roll up. Roll up to your knees. Up here. All right. All right. That's cool. All right, wait. You roll me forward. I'll go on my knees. You don't get it. You're okay. Right where you're at. Stay right there, okay? okay. I'm more happy to be in your custody. I'm terrified of being shot out here. Like, all sorts of strange gangs and...
all the stuff that goes on in this country now. Any needles on you? No, no needles. I had a, okay. a mechanical pencil that it's like a needle. Okay. It's in the car. All right, no problem. The officers are clearly a bit more concerned about Robert's mental state than they are about the mechanical pencil in his car. As you're about to see, his mental state will only become more concerning and disturbing. The license plate is in there. I was afraid of people spotting me who were like gangs. No problem. And all right. Was putting out these signals on his iPad, and I don't know, God knows where he's connected to. Has he hurt your parents? Yeah. What'd nope. you do to them? I killed him. How'd you do that? Uh, I got into get a up. confrontation. I was... Stand up, was, man. Yeah. All right, stand up. Uh, all right. I'll tell you, if you want me to, I can tell you what happened. Make contact with his jurisdiction to find out if it's natural, what you call it. Uh -huh. I've been recently recovered from PTSD. Okay. Okay. And I've been noticing really strange things about their behavior. And also, it's very, it goes very deep with those two. It goes very deep. My, my biological father worked at the UN for 30 years. Those are the keys that include the, uh, the cross part of the car, the small keys. Okay. And uh, the only, there's a medical bag in there. But there's no drugs in it. As the officer is searching the vehicle, he does something completely unexpected. I finally recovered from the me mental drugs that they had me on for, for decades. They had me on neuroleptic drugs. They locked me up over and over again for trying to uh, be normal. Okay. I have a girlfriend, have a wife, you know. You have both? Pardon? You have both? A girlfriend and a wife? No. Absolutely okay. not. Just a wife? No. Well, girlfriend. I have, I have vague memories of being married in high school, but I'm not sure that's true. Okay. I'm not sure it is true. That's mostly loyalty cards. And of course, in the front left pocket should be my regular wallet with my ID. I have two IDs because at the DMV in Midlothian, it's a who uh, gave me the new ID when I applied for my name change, uh, didn't didn't take back the uh, old card. Okay. So now I was stuck with two cards. It's important to note that though he goes by Robert James Raff, his original name was Robert James Ralph. It's possible this name change was the result of his paranoid delusions about his family, since he has plenty of them and only more to come. I could give you like dozens of very, very suspicious things going on around me that really freaked me out, made me really paranoid. I was arrested in uh, Florida. Okay. In, uh, St. Petersburg. Okay. And uh, that was misdemeanor disorderly conduct. All right, let's stay warm. Let's have a seat in the car over here. I'd rather be in your car city than wandering around out here. Okay. I'm scared. Well, we got you. We'll protect you, all right? All right. All right. Watch yourself getting in there. All right. Big step up. All right, you have everything out of my pockets because I don't want you to feel like I'm threatening you. I think there's or, just a couple of coins, and we're not worried about some coins. Uh, that's all that's in there, right? Yeah, we got all that. Yeah, we're good to go, partner. Watch yourself. All right, cool. Lay flat. No, you can slide in. Legs up. All right. There you go. All right. All right. Comfortable for the time being? Yeah, I'm all right. All right, very good. Can I ask you a favor? Yes, sir. May I speak to that officer who's on the right there? Yes. I have something I want to tell him, piece of information. Just wants to ask you something. Give me, give me a second, okay? Wants to tell you something. The officer that Robert requested is actually the original officer who pulled him over. It's possible that he felt some level of connection and safety with this officer, a level deep enough for him to reveal some startling information. I mean, when, whenever you get a chance, I'd like to tell you very something I think is key. Okay. And that is that I think that I felt very, very frightened that my parents were setting me up to be killed to collect um, insurance on me. Okay. And, um... I heard things said sideways and from upstairs on the second floor. Okay. And it involved, you know, um, there was a lot of, I went through a lot of traumatic uh, as a child. Okay. And it's becoming more clear to me in the last year, since about December 2017. Okay. You know, I've been in recovery for a long time. I've been battling mental problems for most of my life. Uh-huh. Most of them inflicted by psychological torture that...
subjected me to. Okay. There's no evidence that Robert's father ever subjected him to any torture or abuse. In addition to the claims of torture, Robert takes the accusations a step further. He subjected me to extreme as a child, things that are coming back to me now. Okay. And he used me as a political pawn for him to get a uh, purchase, in other words, to get a step up at the UN. Uh-huh. Uh, politically, he used me, used my He wife. works for the UN? Pardon? He works for the UN? He works. He works. He's oh. dead now. I killed him. You killed him too? I killed him. Where, where is he at? Uh, he's dead. Yeah. Okay. I tell you, the thing is, one of the most harsh things is I've become almost dysphoric with who I'm actually related to. Okay. Because it, it, things don't match up. Yeah. Who Who's who around me okay. doesn't match up. The behavior, the um, the motivations, or the senseless abuse that I've taken my whole life, and the manipulation and things like neuro, um, neuro-linguistic programming we used on me. Okay. A lot of things have been revealed by my memory and actually... Getting away from psycho, uh, psychoactive drugs like profenazine and risperidone okay. have actually helped me to really recall some of the trauma that I've gone through. Okay. I started to become, I started to put together connections and motivations. The medications Robert named are often used to manage the symptoms of conditions such as schizophrenia. It might be that Robert stopped taking medication that he'd been prescribed and believed that it had opened his eyes to the truth of his past. Later, family friends who knew Robert would allege that he discontinued his medication and his symptoms of illness returned in the months leading up to this incident. In the midst of this conversation, the officer speaking with Robert is interrupted with a sudden command from another member of the force. Hey, Troy. Stop talking to him. Soon after receiving these clear instructions, the officer begins to drive Robert to the station for questioning. Though he isn't allowed to talk to Robert, Robert sure has a lot to say to him. I'd rather be in custody than causing problems out here. Okay. After a while, you know, you've been through so much, so many lies with people who are supposed to be professional, people posing as psychiatrists and so on. That eventually, you don't know who to turn to, and you just react and then run. It seems like there's, there's no good solution. There's no good thing to do. And, you know, I felt really, I've been feeling really, really threatened, you know? Really frightened now that I'm putting things together for myself and understanding what's been going on that I haven't, haven't been really fully conscious of. And that it's not an excuse. It's not good. I understand. I've never seen anything so atrocious as this area of Ohio. My God, I can't believe that this country's like this. I can't believe it. It, it scares the living out of me. Robert, do you have a cell phone? Yeah, I smashed it. It was an iPhone, uh, iPhone 10. I've had too many mobile phone numbers in the last year, like since about December, December 2017. Okay. I've had really bad suspicions of things going on. With my own digital communications, uh-huh. I think only recently I've started to realize how my own search to find out what happened to me when I was younger, how it's been used, I think, for really nefarious things. And it scares the, scares the living out of me. I'm really frightened to find out what, what's been done with my own stupidity. I've been like a total victim my whole life, but it's not an excuse. But did Robert actually do anything that he needed an excuse for? Before the officer left for the station with Robert, everyone on the scene learned the truth from a single phone call that changed everything. Yeah, yeah, Leroy, what's up? Oh, really? Okay. Hey, he's telling the truth. He's telling the truth, he did it. He told us that he had just killed his parents in Virginia. Went ahead and made contact with the with his jurisdiction, and sure, sure as hell, his dad's dead and his mom's missing, and the car's gone missing, and he's a suspect. In, he's a suspect in the case, so we have him in custody currently. Well, we don't have any. We're not charging him with anything currently, but they, but they definitely said that he's a person of interest. So I have a Detective Bergen coming in to, to assist us with this one. Did he say he had a gun? No, he didn't say anything about a gun. He's been pretty honest. So when I got here, what did he say? Something about killing his parents or something? And yeah, they were just confirmed that, so. Yeah? Yep. 
Really? They just found them, huh? Based on our call down there? Yeah. Holy smokes. Holy smokes, indeed. Just hours before Robert was arrested in Ohio, authorities in Midlothian, Virginia reported to his parents' house for a wellness check. When they arrived, they discovered Robert's father's body. He'd been decapitated. It looked as though the weapon he'd been killed with was an axe, perhaps even the very same axe Robert still had with him when he was arrested. His body was hidden beneath a rug and his head was stuffed in a nearby trash can. After serving for years in the United Nations and caring for his family, it was an utterly tragic and unjustified end. Robert's mother was missing, though after his confession the morning of February 3rd, officers finally knew where to look for her body. With Robert's instruction, they discovered her body in the garage of the home. We aren't sure why they didn't look there prior to his confession, but it wasn't until after his arrest that her body was found. She'd been tased and beaten before being shoved into a box. It's likely that the very same taser found in Robert's car was the one he used on his mother. Not only was she a dedicated mother, but she worked in the psychiatry department of a major hospital. In early January of 2023, Robert pleaded guilty to killing his mother, but pleaded not guilty to the murder of his father by reason of insanity. This is possible as each killing is a distinct crime under these circumstances. Insanity, even in an agreed plea, has to be proven by the defendant with clear and convincing evidence. Ultimately, he was sentenced to 40 years, with 38 years suspended in a state mental hospital. His mental health and progress will be evaluated on a yearly basis to determine if he should be released with conditions or remain hospitalized.